You check your phone, no signal. Step outside and the wind is screaming. Not just howling, screaming. You look up. The sun hasn't moved. At all. And that's when the news breaks. Earth has stopped spinning. No gradual slowdown. No warning. Just stopped. What happens next? Spoiler, you're going to want to hold on to something because everything else is flying. Let's break this down. At the equator, Earth spins at over 1,000 miles per hour. You don't feel it because everything's moving together, land, water, air, and you. But if the planet's rotation halted in an instant, inertia doesn't care. Buildings, trees, cars, even the oceans, everything that's not bolted to the bedrock, would keep moving at that same speed. It would be like a global car crash. Except the car is the Earth, and you're not wearing a seatbelt. Supersonic winds, faster than a jetliner, would rip across the surface. Forests flattened, cities leveled, oceans would surge eastward in titanic waves, crashing into continents with unimaginable force. We're not talking typical tsunamis, we're talking skyscraper-sized walls of water wrapping around the globe. And that's just in the first few minutes. Then come the earthquakes. With the sudden redistribution of the planet's momentum, the crust Earth's fragile outer shell would slip and fracture. Entire tectonic plates might jolt out of position. Richter 10-plus quakes would split cities in half. Volcanoes would erupt en masse as internal pressure bursts through new fault lines. After the chaos comes the silence. The planet, once in motion, is now stuck. One half forever facing the sun, the other plunged into endless night. On the day side, temperatures would skyrocket over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Asphalt would melt, crops would die, the air itself would shimmer with heat. On the night side, instant winter, temperatures could plunge below minus 200 degrees. Oceans freeze, power grids collapse under the cold. Darkness stretches out forever. No sunrise, no sunset, just stuck. And without rotation, the atmosphere stops circulating. Wind patterns vanish. The Coriolis effect, the invisible hand behind hurricanes and jet streams, is gone. Superheated air rises on the day side, then crashes down as freezing vacuum on the night side. Storms the size of continents churn along the border, where heat and cold collide. Think, permanent, unrelenting mega hurricanes. And all this, all of this is still just day one. Your biological clock, ruined. Circadian rhythms rely on the cycle of day and night. Without it, animals go insane. Plants wither. Sleep becomes erratic. Confusion, anxiety, even madness spread like wildfire. You can't function without time, and time just stopped moving. Now imagine the world a year later. The atmosphere begins to shift. Heavier gases like CO2 and methane sink to the poles. Oxygen and nitrogen pool around the equator, forming a thin habitable band. We call it the terminator zone, the line between eternal day and eternal night. This becomes humanity's last livable frontier. But even here, survival is no guarantee. Earth's magnetic field, powered by the spinning of its molten core, begins to decay. Without it, we're exposed solar radiation floods the surface. Cosmic rays fry electronics, damage DNA, and cook the unprotected like a microwave with no door. Over decades, the oceans begin to migrate. Water collects at the equator, forming a massive ring-like sea. The poles dry out. New continents rise from the depths. Others sink. The planet reshapes itself, groaning under the strain of its stillness. Tectonic chaos continues. With no rotation to balance centrifugal force, the crust shifts. Mountains buckle. Valleys tear open. The earth becomes unrecognizable. And yet, life finds a way. In geothermal caves and deep ocean trenches, pockets of life survive. Extremophiles, bacteria that thrive in boiling vents or freezing brine, hold out. Maybe even evolve. Somewhere along the Terminator Zone, 
Hidden beneath mountains of ice or rock, scattered human colonies dig in. Massive underground shelters appear, engineered with fusion reactors, artificial gravity rings, and simulated day-night cycles. These are Earth's last cities, sealed vaults in the twilight, powered by whatever energy sources haven't failed. Governments debate the unthinkable. Do we stay and terraform this new, still Earth, or abandon it? Some launch missions to Mars or orbiting habitats. Others argue to hold the line. It's the biggest split in human history. Stay and adapt or escape and start over. Meanwhile, time marches on without rotation, without rhythm. The magnetic field finally collapses. Satellites fall from orbit. The last vestiges of atmosphere begin to drift into space. Earth starts to look more like Mars, a cold, red, dusty husk. The sun still shines on one side, burning it dry. The other is locked in eternal night, frozen and silent. And maybe, just maybe, a few thousand years later, some form of life begins to evolve in the habitable twilight, a strange, resilient cousin of what we once were. All while high above, probes orbit silently, digital time capsules waiting for someone to notice. What would you do if the Earth stopped spinning? Would you hide in the twilight, build a new world underground, or launch into the stars to find a new home? The Earth's spin is more than motion. It's balance, it's life, it's time itself. Without it, our planet becomes a world of fire and ice, silence and storms. So tonight, when you look up at the stars, remember, the ground beneath you is still spinning. And that's something worth appreciating. If this what if left your head spinning, give it a like, drop your wildest scenario idea in the comments, and hit subscribe for more mind-bending futures, pasts, and possibilities. Until next time, stay grounded.